What's up guys, Alec here. Hope you're having a great day. Today I wanted to make a video about the uh, main reasons of why people fail on Amazon. Um, I see this happening a lot and uh, I just want to help you guys to kind of go through a few of the main things that stand out when people start on Amazon. There are a few little things to watch out for and make sure you stay away from. So I just want to go over a few of them. The first thing is getting into unrestricted or banned, banded products. Um, a lot of people, they go through the whole process, they get everything set up, and when they get every, the, the products into Amazon, their listings are taken down a few weeks later. Amazon's algorithm just goes through and kind of just uh, automatically takes them down because they're either FDA approved, they need an approval, they're... Uh, they're, they need a UL certification if it's like lighting or something like that, or um, if it's certain like something that you eat or pills or anything like that. You kind of want to stay away from products like that. Um, they're really risky and they could get you into a lot of trouble when selling on Amazon. You want to stay away from things like that. That effect. When I was looking at a product, um, one of my first products I was looking at, it was it said as seen on TV so that's one of the one of the things to look out for something patented I completely stayed away from that product the numbers looked great but when you kind of looked into it um, you saw only Amazon uh, only like Chinese suppliers selling it no one really was uh, FBAing it which means they had the prime badge the takeaway here is to make sure you're doing your due diligence when you're searching and selecting products. It's so important to pick the right product. You do not want to get into anything like I just previously said that has FDA approvals, uh, you need UL certifications, need health inspections, anything like that. You want to keep it simple. Um, it's usually very obvious to tell if there are issues with a product. You could tell right away by looking at the market and seeing what's going on. If there, if there's kind of some weird stuff going on, and a lot of Chinese suppliers are selling it at low prices and they're not FBAing it, kind of use your judgment and you could search on Google, uh, type in the product name, and then put like FDA approved or put patented or search Google patents. Make sure you know what you're getting into for the product. It is the most important thing to just check what you're doing before you put your initial investment. A lot of people get themselves in trouble, so just, like I said, do your due diligence. Another one of the important th reasons why people fail is because they get themselves into seasonal products. And then they probably source in like November. This happened to me way back when, when I started. I sourced something in November. It probably wasn't one of the best ideas. I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, you have to check seasonality. You could do that through Camel, 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 or the Keepa charts. There's a Chrome extension you could download. And basically, it's a graph, and it shows you how it's selling throughout the year. You want to um, have products that sell consistently throughout the year and are not just season for, like, this is the holiday season or, like, Halloween costumes, and it's just selling in October. You want to make sure that you have that consistent... Uh, amount of sales throughout the whole year maybe just fluctuate slightly but other than that you want to keep it at where it's selling consistently throughout the entire year and you're not really losing a lot from month to month so that's another really important uh, reason why people why people fail they just get into products they don't realize it's seasonal they go through all the work they get it in and then they don't realize oh they're selling Easter eggs and now it's March uh, or May and now the demand dropped for that product. So just make sure you know what what the uh, seasonality looks like by checking the chart. All the data and information is available. So just make sure that you do your due diligence with that as well and look at the seasonality. Another thing I see people doing wrong with their Amazon FBA products is they do not launch their products properly. This could also, along with everything else, make or break your product. If you don't launch your product properly, you'll never make it to the first page. You'll never make it into the first five, ten spots, and you will not get the sales and the sales velocity that you need to consistently sell on Amazon and build that sales history. So I have videos on this channel about 
launching your product and the best way to launch and rank and stay on the first page. They're done through giveaway groups. You could use Viral Launch, which is a software. You basically create coupon codes and you give uh, X amount of products away, 25, 30 products away each day for five to seven days. And you know that based on your main keyword, you type it into Amazon, uh, look at uh, the Chrome extension and you see how much your competitors are selling per day. And you wanna match or beat those sales by a few for three to seven days. So that'll ensure you get on the first page. Another thing is to make sure you know your numbers. And what I mean by that is make sure you know your profitability with each product you sell on Amazon. You wanna make sure that you have a profit margin of at least six to seven dollars or maybe even more. The reason being is you, you're gonna to have to run PPC and that's gonna maybe take a dollar, a dollar twenty-five, a dollar fifty um, out of your profit margin. So you wanna have a big enough profit margin where it doesn't really affect you too much. Also, low profit margins, you're gonna to have to move so many more units to actually make a decent profit per month. So if you have a $10 profit and you're moving 1,000 units per month, that's $10,000. That's a lot more than, than if you're making $3 profit. $3,000, that's still a lot, but you kinda of have to look at your products and make sure the margin is uh, where it should be and really don't get into products that are under 10, 12 bucks because it, the margin gets so tiny that there, there's not enough room to run PPC and do whatever you need um, and to make the, the profit that you, that you wanna make on Amazon per month. But just use the profitability calculator. There's an extension for the Chrome uh, browser and you can basically pull it up and see all the fees and everything that Amazon's gonna charge you and you can put in your product price and see what you're gonna be left with. Make sure that you have a decent profit margin in order to be profitable and to run. The thing I just wanna say is uh, do not get complacent with your business. Continue to try to be the best at the products you're selling by bundling and doing, having the best pictures, doing things to stand out from the rest. That is how you're gonna win on Amazon. Also by continuing to build your brand, don't just have one good product, make 4,000 profit a month and then just kind of kick it up on the beach. Eventually that's gonna catch up to you. You have to continually keep, uh, keep checking and fixing and uh, optimizing and adding new products to your line. That's how you're gonna build a big business and grow it to something substantial to really have forever. That's how you're gonna really stand out and withstand the time and all the competition that's gonna come in and how you're gonna really stay apart and stay above all the competition. So continue to build your brand and you, you will find it that you are gonna actually be building asset, a solid asset. Fuck. What I'm saying is to just reinvest the profits you're making from your current product and spin it off into another product. Keep buying inventory. That's how you're gonna grow a business um, to something substantial. Just keep reinvesting and eventually over time it's gonna be something that you own, it's an asset that you can keep forever and it's gonna be there and you're not gonna get knocked out because of other people, you're building a, a sub substanti substantial and you're building a substantial business and a brand that will be around forever. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, subscribe down below, leave a, leave a comment, thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video.